straight from the Gila Band Vortac right up through the valley here to Buckeye and then go straight, if not slightly north of Luke. But we will stay between the white tanks and Luke. So if you want to ever find out where those F-16s are, look at Buckeye, look at the white tanks, and we're going to stay to the east. So those are two big uh, ground references there. Now I know a lot of uh, VFR aircraft follow the 10, uh, and that is also where we have a lot of issues. We have near passes with uh, mostly the Germans and Goodyear right around there, the uh, Lufthansa pilots there. That's one of our major recoveries to 2-1. If we're on a north flow to 3, it's pretty much the exact same. We're going to be coming down through the Saturn here, and then right, right prior to the white tanks, we're going to beam south. But if you notice, the same thing applies from the Gila Bend Vortac up to Buckeye, is that we're going to stay uh, to the east of all that if we're on a north flow like that. What is your altitude from Buckeye into the one? We're going to be at 78,000 feet here, and then we're required to be at 4,000 feet hard altitude at Buckeye. Okay. It, slightly descending as you approach Luke? Or? Yeah, it's going to be 4,000. 36, and then we have to get down lower uh, after that. It's going to be a slightly descending. But the key is, is a 4,000 heart altitude at Buckeye because there's a, a corridor for general aviation that goes under that right at 36. So there's not a lot of, of uh, deconfliction there. And 3,500 VFR traffic. 4,500 feet. That's, that's the route I fly home every day, so that's why I was concerned about yeah. the altitude. Yeah, and you'll be, you'll be right there, and that's also going to be beaming you know, like the 90 degree offset, like I said, a very dangerous thing for us. Squawking and talking will keep you safe because what I'm going to get, uh, even if, it, if they can't paint you, if there's a blind spot in around the Rainbow Valley here and near the Australia Mountains, but if we're out you know, closer to Buckeye and away from that, they'll be able to paint you at 45. Below four, they have almost no chance. They're, they're going to run into some obstructions and clutter. But even if he can't paint with their radar, they will be able to identify the mode three and C, and they're going to say, uh, "I fly with a GoT call sign. GoT one, you've got a, a single 150 at 4500 unverified." He's going to tell me unverified because he can't see you, but that's what your uh, altimeter is reading. Okay. And then I know I'm, like, I'm either going to deviate, I'm going to go high, I'm more likely not going to try to get under you guys because I can always go high. That's my How way. How far up. from the Saturn area? Do you think your tower would actually like to have us contact them? I usually wait until I'm a couple miles from it. Yeah, I would say at the speed you guys are going, two or three miles is fine. That's fine. At the speeds we're going, it's a little farther out, but yeah. yeah. Is there an arrival um, from like just south of Ulster, Mine, or Ulster Peak and then it follows Grand Avenue down? Because I've seen a lot of guys, a lot of the... I'll show you, I, I'll tell you exactly what that is. Yeah, and you'll see that's one of our high traffic areas. It's a training procedure we do. You're pretty high there, though. Right? Yep, very high, uh, but descending to Ox 1. We're, we're approaching Ox 1, right, right near the Grand. Okay, and here's um, a little bit more about the runway 21, so getting in closer uh, from the white tanks. About 6,500 uh, feet here in this turn. You'll hit uh, Ox 2. I don't know if you guys can see those old Ox triangles out there. They're pretty much just old plot-out uh, World War II sites. And then power plant is a common... Uh, reporting point we use, uh, and we will never go too far outside. We're going to do a pylon turnaround power plant. So that's going to be the extent of our north traffic in our, in our, uh, our VFR pattern. It's only out to 5.6 miles, so if you are uh, using either a moving map or you have the, the TACAN dialed up with DME, you know, six miles and you're good because we're going to be, uh, you'll be outside of class D. Uh, yeah, we stay away from Sun City. They call us in all the time. Uh, and then we uh, come on down. So we're going to be 6,500 feet above 55 here, uh, 5,500 feet, uh, and then 45, 3,000 descending into Luke. Coming in off a of Caterpillar to the south here, this is, uh, is going to be 3,600 feet to go into the pattern. If we go into uh, some sort of straight-in pattern out here, we'll be above 5,000 coming in there. Now, if you find yourself above 10,000 feet at Luke, you're in uh, Class B airspace, so uh, talk to Phoenix uh, at that time. For runway three, it's roughly the same. Off the ox, we're going to just kind of beam along the white tanks here uh, and enter the pattern. We report an ox six down here and Caterpillar, which is essentially a bunch of cattle pins 
uh, over there. So 5,500 over the white tanks and descending. For at 10 miles away from Luke here, this is where uh, north of Buckeye is when we're going to be a lot lower. So 4,000 here, uh, and then the guys at 10 DME are either going to be at 26 or 2,000 feet. So it's a very quick descent once uh, we get Buckeye in there. The issue is because we have aircraft at 36 here, we'll have aircraft at 26 actually 26 here, and we'll have aircraft at 21 coming in for a straight in. So we'll have three layers of F-16s in various different patterns. And like I said, if I'm watching a student from about a mile or in, in the pattern about a half mile away, their altitude control at those speeds are just, I like to say good, but it's not. I've seen it. It's bad. So that is runway three. Uh, here's, I think, what you're talking about and why the Saturn was so very important to us. Uh, as you can see, you guys are right underneath uh, the, uh, there's the Castle Wells Air Park, the Ox-1 uh, arrival and training procedures here. So um, Ox-1 is the auxiliary field where we have an ILS. So we have a TACAN approach we uh, run into there and an ILS we run into there just because we can't handle uh, all the ILS training at Luke proper itself. So in the Satter, we're going to come up really high around 14,000 feet. Uh, and do these descending turns. This says 15, but it's right around 14,000 feet. And then come in for a tack in. So we're right around Castle Wells and staying outside of that. And then coming in around, uh, actually, where is the Ox 1 in this? It's going to be right in through here, uh, right near the, uh, the, the track. This is what the proving grounds over here. Uh, proving grounds here and more proving grounds over there. So we have two different procedures in and around the Satter. The uh, ILS will bring us down to uh, 75 feet at the Ox-1, which we're going to tell them to go around. And the TACAN is going to bring us into 4,000 feet uh, at the Ox-1. Uh, for our uh, around the outside pattern here, so to after the Ox-1, we'll have a radar pattern here, which is going to be usually our on-the-go procedures or climb to 4,000 feet uh, and head uh, 330. So we're going to be, they can put us anywhere from 3 to 6, but usually it's 4,000 feet uh, outbound here. So here you guys are, and here's our training procedures all around there. So early notice uh, anytime would be uh, appreciated because they can tell you how many people are planning to, with their flight plan, be in the TACAN or ILS pattern there for that. There's a Luke Approach Freak 118.15 like I talked about. But it's, it's fairly busy. Uh, when uh, I'm chasing students through this, uh, the good thing is, even though he is going to be doing instrument procedures, we don't have really a hood in a single-seat airplane to practice instrument procedures because he's the only one in that airplane clearing. But he will be looking at his instruments uh, hand, uh, heads down. My chase uh, procedure is going to be about 500 feet away from him, uh, almost co to with a radar lock. Um, I will be locking into him and searching and clearing visually on the radios while he's doing his procedures, and I will be using my radar to look out for you guys too. So even though we're doing instrument procedures here, there's always an aircraft that is searching for you guys for conflicts. So you can't put a hood on a guy who is the only one in the airplane. So, Yep, there's the Satter. You guys are all well and familiar with it. Uh, and like I said, to us, we're happy with it. Really, why? Because um, it was to reduce the midair uh, collision potential with all of us. And it's open almost all the time, and it'll be in the NOTAMs. It can be open on the weekend, but usually it's not. Um, Which brings, brings up, I think, uh, it bugged me a little bit. Uh, it seems like in an area where you're, we're supposed to be contacting you, it's frustrating to have to look at an NOTAM or test it to see if they're open. Mm -hmm. Normal ATC facilities that we're used to yep. are open. Yep. And this is uh, so, that. And so it seems like it seems like you're you're attempting to deal with general aviation in a military way. Yep. So you got to retrain general aviation, which isn't going to happen anytime soon. True. And so it seems to me, just an opinion. Yeah. That it'd be far safer to put people in there 24 hours a day, seven days a week. That would be the safest way. Then everybody knows in the area mm -hmm. it's always open yep the habits are formed mm -hmm. and, you, and you know yeah that's a good idea or just have a recorder on 1815 
said it's close. Well, it has it on 134, yeah. 92 yeah. or something. The ATIS. Like that. The ATIS. What happens if you just transmit an 1850 and you just, just have a recording? Yeah. ATIS will tell you, uh, and that broadcast 24 7, whether it's open or closed. Right. But what you're trying to do is be safe. Yes. And what you're trying to do is get us to use it all the time. Yep. Going along those lines, sometimes you will be open on weekends and yep. it'll actually close. In fact, it happened to me last Saturday. They had a heavy flying out of uh, yep. Luke and they opened, I guess, just for that aircraft and then they terminated service about 15 minutes later. So, yes. Um, w w which is no big deal. Since I do it every day, I'm kind of used to it. But yep. Somebody flying from, say, Wickenburg, where they're not required to speak to you guys at yep. all, but are going into Glendale on a particular day. When I called your tower when this first started, they said you'd never be open on weekends. Um, <laughs> and they were wrong. And they were wrong. Absolutely. And that's, um, I've never been at a facility that closes on the weekends like this. It isn't 24, 24-7. Uh, it's surprising. And the answer I got is, uh, yep, we're cutting back. We don't have money to staff it. And it's true, we are cutting pilots and airplanes at Luke, and they're looking for every single way to just say, we can't, how can we save a little extra money? And a lot of it deals with, hey, shut down the radars, don't bring people in on the weekend. You know, that means to them, they have five teams rather than the six or seven teams to have weekend staff. So it's less personnel. And uh, this is the day and age of do more with less. So. Yeah, it would be ideal if we could have 24-7 facilities. And I wouldn't actually mind flying on the weekends. I don't even mind coming out here on the weekends and talking. I love aviation, so this is fun. So here's the Saturn. Um, I have lots of depictions of it, but you guys, I'm sure, are all well uh, versed in it. The biggest thing here for us is uh, we look at the 60s, especially from higher altitudes, and just go, yep, down there. I know I can expect lots of people uh, tra uh, transiting from Havasu. Uh, or McCarran in Vegas back down to Phoenix. So that is that. That's a depiction of it uh, on these uh, low charts. You can see this is going to be depicting our uh, Oxfield approaches there. Thunder Ridge de uh, depicted uh, in this one as well. For us mostly, um, and I'm going to get to it a little bit later on, uh, we do a lot of low-level high-speed uh, traffic. Uh, there's a VR route out to the west there in which we're going to drop down to be 500 feet and about 500 knots. So um, the NOTAMs, uh, I don't know if you guys are doing flying, uh, but anywhere lower than 4,000 feet out there, you have to be aware of those VR routes. And we will note them when we're going to enter that and exit it with the times. Um, it's a very bad place to be, to be low and to be uh, beak on beak with an F-16. So I've got some of those charts. The, uh, the VR route specifically that's... Uh, west of the white tanks out there. Hey, probably uh, found it right there. Let's see. Mm -mm -mm. White tanks, I think. Got Let's see if, oh, there we go. For the white tanks, you see VR 231? You bet. 231 starting just west of the white tanks there. Um, that uh, goes from 500 feet AGL uh, to uh, 4,000 feet. Now, it's proximity to Luke in here. Uh, my student would have just taken off, turned, checked his fuels, uh, and got here. And now he basically knows he's airborne and in an F-16 and maybe what day of the week it is. I mean, this happens within two minutes because uh, of the speeds we're traveling. So I will not descend him to 500 feet. But just so you know, that is a VR route that is really close to the white tanks. If you fly up here from Bakai, mm -hmm. back home to Thunder Ridge, and then close goes to the uh, mountains here. Yep. And at, at below 3,000 feet, is there any chance there? Here as Not there? at all. Because we, we right, we're going to, our, VF, our, uh, our VFR takeoff procedures are going to keep us at 4,000 feet transiting here. And then when we get into VR 231, I'm really only going to descend my student until we're at least 10 miles further okay. west. So below 3,000 will be okay up. Absolutely. Here. Yeah, absolutely. And that's, that's great because... At this point, which we'll be returning in. Yeah, and that is, that is more than fine. Uh, like you saw, if you're west of the white tanks, well, we're low and we're going to be fast. Uh, and if you're going to be, uh, if you're east of the white tanks, if you're west of the white tanks, um, you know, we're going to be at 4,000 feet but dropping, but probably about 10 miles at least yeah. to the west of it. Okay. Because, uh, you know, it, 
like I said, I have to navigate clear on the radar and visually 